In this era of electronic social media, there's a low-tech social medium that people still connect over, group crafts and projects. I remember when I was a kid, there mm -hmm. were like knitting and sewing circles, and that made way for wine and painting parties. And now the next evolution has just arrived in Minneapolis. Pick up your hammer and your cocktail glass and pour yourself into a project at the site of this week's Mike's Mix. Upstairs Circus is a maker studio meets full bar, so creating and can be merry is our tagline. There's something satisfying about making something with your own hands, and something about doing it with friends that makes it even more enjoyable. A typical crowd is people celebrating things. It could be a bachelorette party, birthday party, girls' night out. Uh, we get a lot of corporate events that come in here and really do team building, literally. Everyone can choose their own project from a menu, and they're actually pretty cool, stuff you would actually use or display at home. Our nail and string art is a big one. People love Minnesota. Yes, people love Minnesota. Our six-pack carry has also been popular. There's a few jewelry items. We have leather working, uh, so like a leather hip flask has been really popular for us here. And while you're making a project, you might just make sparks fly, too. Is it a potential date environment? Absolutely. I really enjoy watching people, especially on their first dates, um, go in and kind of learn a lot about each other just in terms of following directions, or I need help, or I don't need help, or you can get really focused on your project if you're not enjoying the date. The bar is stocked with coloring books for grown-ups, and all are welcome to stop in, even just for a drink. So you guys have more traditional drinks on the menu, like a, a riff on a Moscow Mule, but also some more interesting, unique stuff, too. Right. What's this? So this is called the orangutan. It's got a tang rim. It's got tang inside, vodka, some champagne. That's good. <laughs> not too syrupy sweet. Um, what else is on the menu? Can you show us how to make another one? Sure. Uh, let's show you how to make a Julius the Great. And we're going to take an ounce and a half of prairie gin. This is built right in the glass, right? It is. An ounce and a half of orange juice. We're going to take a half of ounce of our homemade vanilla simple syrup and then fill the rest of the glass with tonic. So you're going for the orange Julius flavor. We here, are. Right? Just a little more boozy. Why haven't they been adding gin to orange releases <laughs> all this time? I agree. That's very good. It's reminiscent of uh, a mimosa in a way because it is a little effervescent. Right, just with a little bit more of that vanilla bean taste that yep. really makes it more of a balanced cocktail. So uh, on Saturday and Sunday mornings, they also hold making and mimosas, which like features that. bottomless mimosas. Uh, if you want to make that drink, the Julius the Great at home, I've posted the recipe at WCCO.com slash Mike's Mix. And the thing that impressed me so much was that the, all of the kits that I saw are things that I would actually use. A lot of times that's just the gimmick to get you in. Mm -hmm. But no, the stuff you take home from these projects are actually pretty cool. So you can go and have fun with friends and yep. make something or you make actually new use. Friends, yeah. All right. Cool.